Hi, I'm Christopher Marlin, Snowflake Solutions Architect here at Aimpoint Digital, and also a Snowflake Data Superhero. In this video, the sixth video in our Cortex LLM function series, we're going to be looking at vectors. Now, this video is going to be a bit more theoretical than the others, uh, and involve a little bit more detail. So we're going to first go over the embed text functions, then we're going to go over the vector data types, and finally, we'll look at the vector functions. So a little bit more involved than the previous lot, but I know you're all raring to go. So let's get started. So in this video, we're looking at vectors, and there's a bit more going on than just calling one function. So to begin with, if you've uh, watched other videos, you don't need to do this bit. If this is the first time you're watching this video, um, in, uh, in the link below, you should find uh, where to download this movies.pyk file. Make sure you upload it here and do run this code uh, to create the movies table. Um, so assuming that is all done, let's just look at the movies. Uh, this is the top 10 grossing films uh, adjusted for inflation worldwide. Um, and just all bits of data on them, produced by music by Bob Spot, budget, box office, language, all that kind of thing. Okay, so defining a vector, um, because, uh, you know, I, I've only recently uh, learned about this concept. Um, so vector embedding is a way of representing data, particularly text, images, or other high dimensional data in a lower dimensional space using vectors. This technique is used in machine learning and natural language processing to transform complex data into numerical format that algorithms can process more efficiently. So basically, when you have you know, fairly big or hard to comprehend data for a machine, you turn it into a numerical format that just means it's more efficient to, to look at. Okay, so what I wanna do is I want to to get the, the vector embedding for the style, the actors that are involved. Um, and then we can compare and see you know, what are the similarities between the films. Um, so let's do select from movies. And I'm going to do the title. And then when we call a cortex function, um, we, you know, it's a bit like a UDF. We need to use the dead call, use the Snowflake database and the cortex schema. So snowflake dot cortex dot. Um, and to get the vector, I want a uh, what, seven, six, eight dimensions. There's two, seven, six, eight. And then there's um, the other one, which is 1000 and something I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, is, a, is a bit bigger, has slightly more dimensions, therefore is a little less uh, efficient. Um, we're going to use a smaller one, so that's embed text 768. We have to specify the model we want to use, so I'm going to use snowflake arctic embed m, um, that's snowflake pirate tree model, and I'm going to run this on the starring so let's run that. Uh, unknown model. I have spelt this wrong somewhere. Uh, snowflake dash Arctic. Arctic. There we are. Okay, great. So this is utter gibberish, but that's fine. Okay, so what we then want to do is uh, this vector. This is now a new data type. Uh, at least it was at the time of recording. And what I want to do is I want to create a table that can store this vector. So I'm going to do a create or replace statement. We we'll call it movie vectors. Movie is the string. It's a, yeah, just going to call this um, an actors vector, which would be a vector data type. Um, we're specifying that it is a float and that there are seven, six, eight dimensions. So. So that's what you have to do when you are defining um, a table with a vector data type. This is how you format it. Okay, so I'm just going to run that. And that has been successfully created. So I just want to insert into movie vectors. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste this. I'm going to put that data in 
there. Okay, now what I may want to do is actually do some analysis on the similarity. And to do that, I can use some vector functions, okay? Um, so I'm just going to define these vector functions. And just to note that actually these are normal functions in Snowflake. They're not cortex functions. So you don't have to do snowflake.cortex. You can just call these like you would call any other function. Um, so you've got vector inner product. And just to make this simple, um, you know, it multiplies the two vectors and similar vectors, uh, larger inner products than dissimilar ones. Okay. The L2 distance, um, basically the you know, measuring the distance between between two vectors. The larger the distance, the further apart the vectors are. So it starts at zero and goes up. Okay. And then the cosine similarity. Uh, so it's based on the angle between two vectors. Um, and it, you know, again, I don't think it's too necessary to go into the depth here. I think this last line is basically all we need to know. Um, so it's it's always um, of an interval minus one, one. Um, identical vectors have a cosine similarity of one. Uh, orthogonal vectors have a similarity of zero. And two opposite vectors have a similarity of minus one. So hope that that's fairly clear. You don't really need to understand the mathematics, because I don't. Um, you just need to kind of know what the output is and how to interpret that output. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a window function, uh, lead, and just compare uh, the uh, you know, the subsequent row of uh, vectors. So what I'll do is I'll select from movie vectors that's maybe we created. Um, movie. Um, what I'll do is I'll also get the, the movie we're actually comparing against. So over order by movie. Um, and then I just want to compare these. So I'll use vector in a product and compare the actors vector. Wasn't it against lead the subsequent one? So actors vector over order by movie. Okay, and I'll change that. Okay, so let's hope I have done that correctly. Right, so we're getting inner product of. Uh, 0 0.8537. These are fairly consistent, these. Um, and as you see here from the inner product here, um, larger inner products, uh, similar vectors result in larger in, uh, inner products than dissimilar ones. Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste this to make my life a lot easier. And down here, I'm just going to change for L2 distance. And get the L2 plot alias as L2 distance here. Okay, all kind of, you know, middling between zero and one. Um, and if you just look here, um, the distance can be value of zero or higher. If the distance is zero, the vectors are identical. The larger the distance, the further apart the, the vectors are. So, you know, these are not. Zero. That's uh, basically what I want to know there. Um, and then let's do the cosine similarity. As you can see, these are all called in the exact same way. Uh, yeah, fairly simple as well. And there we go. Uh, again, very, very similar looking results. And uh, if we just scroll back up, um, you know, if they're identical, one, they're the opposite, they're minus one. So these being positive and going quite close to one, you know, you could say actually there's not um, a great deal of difference here in the, uh, in the cosine terms. 
And there we are, a fairly quick introduction to Vectors in Snowflake. So, thank you for watching this video in our Cortex series. Um, if you liked it, please do like and subscribe. And I very much look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you very much.